This is a reading of Woods Runner by Gary Paulson, chapter nine. <clears throat> Strange dreams, visions of unreality, endless screams that started with low grunts and became more and more shrill until they cut his soul. Dreams of his mother all dressed all in buckskins, ladling some kind of thick stew with a wooden spoon into a wooden bowl chewing tobacco and spitting off to the side while she held the bowl out, shaking her head. He ain't anywhere near right yet. She spit her wad of tobacco juice out again. Brains scrambled to hell and gone. <clears throat> then a trap door came down, a lid, something thick and dark, and there was no light at all. Just blessed darkness and sleep, 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 and more screams no sense of time. Once he tried to remember his name and fought with it for over a minute or a day or a week or 10 years, he couldn't tell. More dreams scattered, his mother, this time wrapped in a blanket with stringy black hair hanging down at the sides of her head while she chewed on an obnoxious cud. She disgorged it, slapped it on its head and tied it with a filthy rag spitting more tobacco juice out and nodding. Got to get the pits in out or she's going to rot on him. It was as if his eyes never really opened, as if he saw everything through closed lids and the images that swirled through his mind were so mixed that they became a blur. Night, day, night, day, light and dark seemed to flop and flow over each other. Pictures would stick for a moment, then go. A horse, then a cow, then his mother leaning down, still in the dirty blanket. Greasy black hair hanging down the sides of her head, raising the poultice and grinning, spitting more tobacco juice. Coming clean now, she said, clear pus. Looks clean as spring water, all the yellow gone. And then bouncing, incredibly rough bouncing, as if someone were jumping on a bed while he was trying to sleep. He would pass out in pain, rolling waves of pain. Finally, a picture stopped, just stopped in front of his eyes, in front of his mind, locked in. It was dark on night and he was on some kind of wooden frame lying on the ground. A fire burned nearby, and when he opened his eyes wide, the light from the fire seemed to shove a lance into the middle of his head. He grunted in pain. He closed his eyes and waited for the rolling pictures to begin again. When they didn't, he opened his eyes, but only in the slit. The image was the same, a bed frame of some kind of fire, and this time less pain from the light. As he watched, an arm came out of nowhere and put a piece of wood on the fire and then withdrew. He tried to move his head and see where the arm went, but the pain was so intense he nearly lost consciousness. He lay back and closed his eyes, opening them again when the pain receded. Where? Who? The words peeled in his mind like a bell echoing around inside his head. A figure appeared next to the fire, not his mother, but a young man with stringy black hair and a cheek full of tobacco juice. He leaned down, his face close to Samuel's. You there, you in there righteous, or are you going away again? I'm, I'm here, who are you? John Cooper, John, John Cooper, but most just call me Coop. Where, long story that, we'd be about 12 miles from where you got that egg on your head, 12 miles in distance, more in that in time. <clears throat> when, I don't remember, some Indians, I think I shot at one, then nothing. Why did I shoot an Indian? Can't tell. We come on these Iroquois and some redcoats, We'd already seen what they took and done back at Miller's Crossing. So we snuck up proper and took them on. I remember you were shooting. You say we, where are the others? 
asleep. I'm night watch tonight. Plus I've been doctoring you and thought you might lose your light during the night. You've been breathing like an old pump. I guess you were just sucking air hard because you didn't die. Of course it could still happen. I got a cousin kicked in the mule, in the head by a mule. They're fractious mules. And he lived for a night on two months before he lost his light. He never talked none except now and again, a kind of moan, like somebody stepping on a duck. Then he just got up and died. Samuel closed his eyes, felt a spinning. Then as if a fog were lifted, it all came back. I was tracking Ma and Pa. They, I mean the Redcoats, the Indians, hit our place while I was looking for Bear. They killed almost everyone, but took my parents and a few others captive. Coop nodded. We saw them all around a fire, ropes tying them together. What happened to them? Coop shrugged. Wasn't much of a fight. We fired once, reloaded, laid out another round, and they ran. Them them redcoats had wagons already hooked up and they piled the captives in the wagons and lit out. We couldn't shoot no more for fear of hitting the captives. The Indians just drifted away like smoke. That would have been that exception of one of them put a musket ball in Paul. It was in his gut, awful place that. We knew he was going to die. Ain't nobody comes back from a belly wound and kept waiting for it, but he made four days. He gave up his light last night. No, night before. Died screaming, it was bad. Surprised it didn't bring you out of your stupor, the screaming. Kept everybody up all night. Samuel closed his eyes, trying to put numbers together. Died one, two days ago after making four days. If a belly wound took four days to kill, and it happened the day of the fight, but Paul died two days ago. How long since they took the captives since the fight? Five, six days. You've been out six, day, six days. We like not found you when we did. We almost left you. Thought you was with the Raiders. Me, why? Well, you wasn't with us. So we thought you was with them. But Carl did something think on it. Carl's my brother and he's one to think on things. And I said, look how messed up your head was where they clubbed you. And you look at the bullet hole and look at the bullet hole in the Indian you killed. That's honey of a little rifle you got. And how could you be with them and still get clubbed and shoot one of them? So we took you with us. I've been out six days. Hmm. Closer to seven, counting the night. And did you say we come 12 miles? Coop nodded. First three days, mm, no, four. We let you lay. Everybody thought you would die, and there was no sense dragging you. Then there was Paul with his belly wound. If we tried to move him, he would scream like a panther. Then we rigged up a drag and started to pull you back on one of them oxen. They left behind when they ran. All the bumping. Coop nodded, spit tobacco juice in the fire and listened to it hiss. We couldn't stay too long and thought you could die just as well dragging as you could laying up somewhere. If we'd left you, something would have come along and ate you. So here you are. My head. Coop nodded. Good cut from that tomahawk. Carl took some deer sinew he had and an old needle he carries for fixings and sewed it up right pert. He said, in case you lived, wouldn't be much of a scar across your forehead. Coop smiled and with some pride added, it come on to having green pus and everybody knows that's bad. So I made a spit and backy poultice and tied it on a piece of rag. Pus cleared up in two days. So I've been laying for six days. Another nod. Coming on seven. <clears throat> well, how? With a start, Samuel realized he didn't have any pants on underneath the coarse blanket that covered him up. 
How come I'm not all messed up? We took your pants off, got them wrapped in a blanket packed with your rifle. Indian must have been in a hurry or he could he would have took it. Sweet little shooter like that. Also got your possible bag and powder horn. What you feel under your rear is fresh grass. Anytime you messed, we threw the old grass away and pulled in half a foot of fresh new grass. <clears throat> slick as a new calf or maybe slick as a baby's bottom. Maybe I should put my leggings on. Only if you ain't going out of your head again. I don't think so. Suits me. I was the one having to get new grass all the time. You ain't eat nothing other than a little broth I got down you one time and some water now and again. Man can go long time without food, no time at all without some water. I'm starving, Samuel said automatically, but with the words came the feeling and he realized he was as hungry as he'd ever been. You ought to drink something soft first. Coop handed him a wooden bowl with a mixture of broth and meat. Go slow. This is from some salted ox they was cooking when we jumped them. Samuel took the bowl. He tried to drink slowly, but as the taste and smell hit him, he couldn't help gulping it, meat and all. So fast that he gagged and threw up. Slow, Coop repeated, coming back with a blanket roll and putting it up on the ground next to Samuel. You'll founder if you don't go slow. Samuel started over carefully. There was silence as he ate, chewing completely before swallowing small bites, small swallows. It's like fire, he thought, when you're cold. Fire moving through your body. He ate the first bowl handed it to Coop and watched him refill it, this time with broth and chunks of glistening fat as well as meat. The second bowl he drank and ate more slowly than the first. And while he ate, he made a mental list of questions to ask when his stomach was full. Why are you here? How many of you are there? Where are you going? Is there any way you could help me find my mother and father? Are you, will you, can you, do you, questions roaring through his mind. He finished eating. He lay back. He opened his mouth to ask the first question and his eyes closed in the same instant. And he was immediately asleep. And the last thing he thought as he went under was that he still hadn't put his pants on. American Spirit. Although poorly trained and weakly led and improperly fed so badly that soldiers sometimes had to eat their shoes. The Americans took comfort from fighting on home soil, which usually had a much higher morale than the British. While they were often outnumbered and fought with inferior equipment, this spirit had an enormous effect and they took the phrase, morale is to fighting as four is to one to heart on the battlefields.